first off, Shadman has ruined Teen Titans for me. Whenever I see Raven, it's like, she's, you know, she's kind of curvaceous in the original series. I never noticed that. See, I noticed that when I first started watching it. I was 13, though, so I have an excuse. I, okay. Because I remember the the uh, fighting game they had in the browser on uh, Cartoon Network at mm-hmm. the time. And, like, the, that was my first exposure to Teen Titans and, like, showing, like, all the characters and the title card. Especially, and when I saw Starfire and Raven, and then, um, I, like... Ding, ding, ding! Ding! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a new word I'm stealing from a Shad post, which is, girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Hmm. Oh, that was him that they originated from? I thought that he posted that in his Twitter, so I assumed it was him. Yeah, because I saw, like, a, 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 the, an edit of what I assumed to be a hentai. That I have not read, uh, but yeah, where they put your hand on the Bible now, and where they replace the dialogue with that line. It's a good line, actually. I have something I'm I'm not afraid to admit. Some of my earlier stories have lines directly taken from iFunny comments. Hmm. That is my grave sin. Mm -hmm. Internal screaming. No, a good one. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. I wanted to talk about uh, movies today, like oh. uh, best mo- like the best movies we've seen this year. Um, like what, like of the movies you've seen this year, which one would you say is the, the best you've seen? Oh God, that's a heart Infinity War, because it simultaneously said no to everything we've ever expected in our movie, and also continues to follow every trend. Mm-hmm. The ending. Because I remember watching it the first time, and I was on the edge of my seat. I'm like, "Yay, Thor killing us! You should have gone for the head." Click. Mm-hmm. See, I had a feeling that they were gonna do that. Just, just because, like, then it's like the audience would have to, like, like you keep the audience hanging. Because, like, well, what happens when he gets the last Infinity Gem? It's like, but then now we, we, like, they do that. They give that satisfaction while at the same time, like, subverting mm-hmm. your expectations or whatever. Yeah. Also, it's created a lot of good memes, which I have to appreciate. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, some memes are worth it. Like, um, there was one of Mario, he's fading away, he says, I had to do it, Luigi. <laughs> we should have him turn to slime, it would be perfect. Hmm. Um, what about you? Um, I was gonna say Baby Driver. Ooh, um, I, was that good? Yeah. Uh,. I was actually watching a different podcast, like a podcast from uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf, his uh, Let's Play a Boss podcast, and they were they were saying that they didn't like, or they thought it was average, and I would completely disagree, actually, because like, I would recommend it to anybody. Um, is it, they're, they're, I guess like I can see where they're coming from when they say you know uh, there, there wasn't a lot that hooked them, and like yeah, it is kind of generic if you strip down a lot of the style, but the style is what makes the movie it, it so great. Now, when you mean last year, can I go into a little bit of last year this year? Sure. Because um, I don't remember many movies I watched this year if it's not Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Hitman's Bodyguard. Mm-hmm. I thought that was fucking hysterical. Yeah, I heard it was really good, and nobody saw it. I saw it with my mom, because my mom likes Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. And I watch it because I like Samuel L. Jackson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen, uh, speaking of Ryan Reynolds, I haven't seen Deadpool 2 yet. Uh, I heard that was pretty good. It is. I saw uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, recently, and I hated it, actually. Okay, yeah. It, it's it's just, it felt like a TV movie. It felt so cheap and just not funny at all. I did like Goliath, though. Mm-hmm. It's probably the actor. I have a problem where if it's an actor I like, I will forgive bad writing of that character unless it's atrocious. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah. I really like Ghost, though. Ghost was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I hope they do something interesting with the Captain Marvel movie. Yeah, I heard a scroll are going to be in it. Hmm. And I really hope we get Super Scroll. Yeah. He's one of my favorite villains of all time. Like, look, I can do what you can do, but better. That's how you have to say every line. You have to do the arm waves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I have another one, and you probably know it's going to be Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Mm-hmm. It's one of those movies. If you like the books, not that much compared to the movies, it's the perfect one. It blended Jurassic World Park and the books, and it kind of had a really cool dinosaur villain. Like, I never actually felt like, wow, that's actually, like, I do a thing where I sympathize with the carnivorous mutant dinosaur. Like, he's just, 
he's just a uh, um, bad race. But this thing is like, hey, do you mind if I spoil a scene? There's a guy pulling out dinosaur teeth to make a necklace because apparently uh, there's a high mental illness rate among bad guys. Mm-hmm. Well, he goes into this, it's a hybrid of like every carnivorous dinosaur they have plus a secret one that <coughs> human in the sequel. <coughs> and he's going to pull its tooth out and he's trying to and it's using its tail to distract him. It's like a giant cat, hmm. but the worst parts of a cat, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. It also, um, the trailers are completely bullshit to the movie, and I like that. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, the Meg, how the trailers were like completely different from what the movie ended up being. Oh, is the movie good? Well, n- no, it's actually, like, the trailers framed it as, like, being really campy, though, and they play I mean, it completely straight in the movie. Oh, fuck you, Meg. I'm sorry, I cannot stand... She just said, shut up, Meg. Shut up, Meg! I actually like Family Guy memes. I do. Like, just from how shitty they are. Come on, you know, memes are better than some of the newer stuff. Oh, absolutely. I also like it, because I have, um, I have this for, uh, I don't even, he's weird. I don't quite like him, but I keep talking to him. It's kind of like my own personal Chris Chan, and it's like one of those MMORPGs where you pick this character's backstory or, like, his future. Like, I literally got him back on a human sleep schedule. Well, um, he... Two things. This is off topic. We had a 55-minute argument over how he said if they had the materials, ballistas could replace tanks in modern warfare against ISIS. He also believed in 10 meter long wingspan birds that would swoop down humans and nest in the groups of hundreds. It's that guy. Oh, yeah. But um, he, he did this like joke. He referenced the third episode of Family Guy and I caught the reference and hated myself. Was that the one where like Peter crashes into like a satellite dish and yeah. like, takes out all the TV in town? I am depressed that I recognize the third episode of Family Guy, yet it took me eight tries to get into a a Yahoo account that I deleted. (laughs) I can't believe that I remember that, too. God. I mean, the the original, the first two or three seasons of Family Guy are the best. Yeah. But would you say they're that good? No. They're not, like, they're they're not, like, the, like, season six of The Simpsons. I, I would call them serviceable. Yeah. Um... Yeah, would you say that like I was I had a weird thought before I got here. What? Um, do you think that in the future, like five hundred, six hundred, or even a thousand years from now, people are gonna look back on Chris Chan and think he's like uh, like a Greek philosopher or something like in that level? Because like I was like I was watching a video on the Hercules um, and how like the Disney version of that was like really inaccurate to the original Greek texts. And that, well, and like, people were, like, criticizing the movie for that. But really, like, in the Greek texts, Hercules is just this conceited asshole, just completely narcissistic. And just, it's like, he does horrible things, and yet he's framed as being always in the right. And I'm like, hmm, where have I heard of this before? Oh, my God. <laughs> new, new to the feeders, the, the legends of Chris Chan. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Chan has, like, played, like, this, like, Adam Sandler, no, not even like a Ben Stiller character. Mm-hmm. I can easily see people in the future looking back on Christian as being like, "Oh, he was such a brilliant mind ahead of his time, and he died in poverty. How tragic!" And, and it's like, and that's why I mean, it's tragic in a in a di- completely different way. Yeah, I if if I find that that's happening in the future due to time paradox, I'm traveling the future and kicking some balls in, so there's no kids being born. <laughs> Well, that, that's not how the future works. Uh, you'd have to kick people's balls in the past. In the mid-future. Yeah. Like, it's not that future yet. Right. Also, you know that within our lifespan, we're probably going to have to survive 42069? Yeah. I, if I have grandkids, they're getting their asses kicked that day. I'm taking the ball bat out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. God, you know... A, Chris Chan would make a really good movie if you took out him being a horrible person. Yeah. You know, he, the downtrodden young autistic man and his journey to the top of internet stardom. Mm-hmm. And you have like, uh, what is it called? Like four, his 4chan parody? Mm-hmm. Four clover leaf, whatever it is, is being this... Bi- no, it was, uh, uh, I, know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't four clover leaf. It was like, uh, oh. It was, it was something really stupid. Uh, something trash, really. Yeah, like, 
Four cent or? It was like uh, four cent garbage. Four cent garbage. God, I hate that we both knew that. Yeah. Well, I I called out before you did, so yeah, blame like, me. Okay. You know what else I have to mention here? I'm sorry. I was thinking about this uh, crap, and I just forgot. I'm so fucking pissed. Have you realized that um that you know every lol cow has hit this moment of no return? Mm-hmm. I'm just picturing you know he, you know there's a moment in Christian's life where he's standing at this precipice. One valley is him going to obscure him getting a job at Burger King, mm-hmm. and he looks to the other and there's a noose hanging there. It's a metaphorical noose, and Sonic just says, "Come with me, and we'll go the Quickville." <laughs> You know, you know how Ebony Maw talked in Infinity War? Uh, he was a guy who called Squidward. Oh, yeah. That's how I picture Sonic that you talking in <laughs> Christian's head. Man. You ever seen uh, Sonic the animated series? I need to now. I, I, I keep putting it off. Yeah, it was uh, on Newgrounds. It was animated by uh, Spaz Kid. Who's, Is it uh, good? Um, I, I, th- I vaguely remember, like... A few of the, I think I watched all the episodes once, but that was way back in like 2012. So, like it's it's early it's early four chan or early uh, Newgrounds, se- semi early Newgrounds, back when like it was the quote unquote golden age, which really was kind of shitty. It really has no it really has no merit being called the golden age. Do you know I, I was playing Dishonored too again, and there's a line there like the bad old days, just turning that turn. That's how I describe a lot of the earlier net. Welcome, think back to the battle days. Yeah, animation technology, uh, consumer-grade animation technology is so much better now than it was then. Because um, you have people, like that, that you actually have people with talents uh, making this, making animations. And uh, yeah, back then it was just crappy Flash, when, at like 1.0 almost. Remember all the Stickman animations? Mm-hmm. Don't you kind of want to figure out what happened to those guys? Um, I mean, they're probably just working regular jobs now. They were, because they, when they did that, they were probably just teenagers f- fooling around. Okay, there's this one stick animation I want to get to. I want to rewatch to get to the end. Basically, got it's it's a fucking emo edge lord. Hey, yeah, I got this magic thing. I can only die at twelve o'clock at midnight. So I'm a math murderer now. Suck y'all. And I want to go back and watch it because I never saw how it ended. They had this really edgy cop subplot. Mm-hmm. And I just remember it was being retarded, and I liked it. You remember uh, Gmod animations? Uh, famous cupcake. Uh, yeah, like uh, there was, yeah, like like oh yeah, and the hacks like ha- the hacks. Um, I, I haven't seen that one. I've only seen the uh, the Das Boschet videos where and like it's where it's kind of like Robot Chicken, where it's like these like quick quick cut uh, sketches. That and uh, Kitty O Seven O Six, uh, who. He, like he did like some of the best ones like Team Fabulous Two and Mass Effect. Mass Effect I actually put in uh, one of the podcast episodes, the one you just watched. And uh, was that the one with the cars? Yeah. yeah. I was wondering what the fuck was going on because I because I I had a Discord open. And I was talking to somebody. I go back and said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, like his his stuff was the best. And uh, unfortunately, he uh, died of cancer a couple of years ago. Oh, oh, um, so yeah, he's uh, like. It lives on forever in legend in our hearts and like whatever. legitimately rest in peace. I yeah. don't yeah, like Yeah. Um he like Team Fabulous too was I think my first exposure to No, no, my first exposure to him was his uh, GTA four videos, mm-hmm. the GTA four mission, uh, Diary of Claude Speed. And that was like legitimately like top of his game. Because, like it's all done in the uh, GTA four engine. It's just like uh, controlling uh, GTA four sprites and like just setting up the camera angles in um uh, like a third, like a third party mod, and uh, it's like it's legitimately like cinematic, like good stuff. Do you know what I'm sorry? I'm through the animations I like, and it. What was the moment when you realized the internet was a strange place that you kind of liked for its weirdness? Oh, uh, that kind of liked. Um, well, that implies like, see, see, yeah, they see like. Um, those are two different things, yeah, like okay. recognizing it as being weird and liking it, are like two different things. I ask weird questions. I apologize, man. Um, I remember, uh, well, DeviantArt was my first exposure to uh, weird stuff that I thought was cool, but I didn't really, I wasn't self-aware enough to recognize it as being really fucking weird. 
because uh, I bring up a lot uh, the Snafu comics, uh, Bleed Man's, uh, Powerpuff Girls, Dojinshi, uh, Grim Tales from Down Below. That's where like I was like, whoa, like fan fiction. Like that was also my kind of my first ex exposure to fan fiction. I think. Um, but yeah, that and fan fiction. Dot and that's that's what got me into writing actually. Um, I see this thing here. Yeah, like, oh fuck, I found my old account a couple years ago. And my response was, uh, try not to find any sharp implements because I wanted to destroy it. I mean, if I went back on uh, my fanfiction.net account, well, actually, there's only one story that I left up there. Um, it was this Maximum Ride fanfiction. I wrote smut. Uh, yeah, like, I read smut. That's, that was sort of my, like, when I, when I couldn't uh, find porn, I mean... Like when, or when I didn't want to go to like the CD sites to risk getting a virus, I would go to fanfiction.net. And you kind of look for the characters you like. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually some like, there's probably some saved on my favorites list still. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh god, yeah. And there's actually some stuff that was like legitimately well written that uh, I think that if I went back, well, not not the not just smut, but like, uh, in like general. actually, yeah, in general stuff. Like, like, there was this Bioshock fanfiction that I read once that was, like, legitimately added some character to the main character in the first one. I read, uh, there's an Evangelion fanfiction out there, and I used to read it a lot. Is that the one that crossed over with Looney Tunes? No, that was when I was writing. Oh, okay. But there was actually one, and it, um, apparently they took this novel, I don't remember the novel, it's called, I remember fanfiction, and they just took the setting and put Ava there, and it fucking worked. Huh. Kind of reminds me of uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, the original book. But no, like, they didn't have the Ava, but they had the cast. Okay. And they had him interact. And it's like, damn. They had characters that didn't even talk in the show interact, and it worked. Oh, man. You know, I'm sorry, I was thinking about something here. I, um, I remember this moment. The first virtual novel I downloaded was Kawada Shoujo. And my response was, what, what is she? Oh my god, they're all crippled. And then as the 11 year old, I like, I kind of like the blonde one. <laughs> uh, you think that, uh, I remember a while ago, right before Homestuck ended, uh, Andrew Hussey was talking about finding a way to make it all downloadable. And I'm wondering if he, if he ever gets around to it, if he's going to do that for Homestuck, is make it into a downloadable visual novel style. How long do you think that'd be? Uh, to make it? No, to play through it. Oh, uh, I'm trying to remember, like, how long it took, m well, I mean, aside from, like, the buff buffer times, uh, it would probably take about 10 to 12 hours if you're, like, just speeding through it. Yeah. Oh, man. Because, like, I remember there are gameplay segments where, uh, it's, like, sort of this RPG maker setup where you control the characters and interact with them. For one page. I, I'm I'm just remembering the internet man. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm sorry. I was. I didn't get much sleep last night. I got legitimately zero hours of sleep. Yeah, I've like yesterday. I had uh, some shock treatment done, so that's that's why I'm kind of out of it too. Oh yeah, like dude, the M for P is mixing. I was thinking about this. Did you, um, Doom Eternal? Did you see the gameplay? Yes. Did you hear about the backlash? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, my favorite line is mortally challenged. Yeah. Like... <laughs> the term demon is offensive. I know, it's like, when I saw that in the back of my... Have you seen Jumanji? Remember the drums that play when danger's happening? Mm -hmm. The drums are going off. <laughs> oh, dude, I want to see a Jumanji movie, but instead of, like, you know, like, animals, it's just angry uh, Tumblr users. You're like, bum, 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 bum. You've angered the fur, Ken, and you're rolling the fur. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, the gameplay looks amazing. It does. Like, I, lo I love the uh, grapple uh, machete. Thing. Oh, the grapple shotgun. Yeah. God bless the guy who came up with that. Well, it's not the shotgun that's the grapple. It's, like, uh, something on the other arm. I, oh, oh, that? Yeah. That, the chainsaw. That's the chainsaw. Oh, but the shotgun has a grappling hook. Mm -hmm. So you shoot it and you pull over and you shotgun the motherfucker in the face. Yeah. I also saw that like they were clarifying the extra life system. Like, yeah. Uh, like they sh they showed that for like a second. Mm -hmm. the, and like how uh, it's so you don't have to always restart at a checkpoint. It's like you know 
if you get killed, then you can... Like, if you have an extra life saved up, then he just gets back up and starts, like, murdering demons. I really hope there's a small little animation. Like, someone, like, punching the ground. Or, like, show, the, like, a demon touch him and he knocks his head off. As, like, they were showing that, uh, that meme, uh, man literally too angry to die. <laughs> um, like, another thing I liked was, uh... Like the cinematic cutscene where he's like uh, in, in the guy. he's in the base and like he just grabs the guy's key card or like it's just how everybody's like. Did you know that the guy him. grabbed his balls? Um, the guy grabbed his balls when Doom guy was leaning over. Yeah, I was waiting to see like a wet spot show up in his crotch. <laughs> no, I kind of want a Doom movie now. Uh, I mean, no, here's how you do it. I know there's already been one. Yeah, Doom guy doesn't talk. It's just everyone else talking about him. Like you give him like a plucky sidekick every chapter who dies. Or you can make it like the Doom comic. Like, you are huge. That means you have huge guts. No, that's the final scene as he's fight like super mega cyber Hitler. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he rips the helmet off and says, I can talk. And you hear like, he gets like, like he's clanging his chainsaws together. Rip and there. Yeah, with Cyber Hitler, that would be a Wolfenstein movie though. <laughs> they take place in the same universe. Do they? Yeah, um, there's a... I, I don't, didn't play the DLC. The Old Blood for Wolfenstein, you can see, like, pictures of a cyber demon. And there was a... Um, in the Doom or the Doom RPG, BJ Blazkowicz joins your party. The final boss is the cyber demon before you make him a cripple. Hmm. Speaking of that... Um, speaking of cripples, and, and, and this isn't related to Kawada Sojo... I'm in a Marvel, uh, we have an, uh, a not safe for work chat. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, hey, hey, we don't kink shame here, right? And when he said that, and I'm, you know, and I'm like, I put my gun at the hip, and I'm watching him. And he says, what's he doing? He says, it's just a little thing. He's got an amputee fetish, and that's a big spider. I'm sorry y'all went deaf. I'm sorry. Uh, if I, I kill a spider, so I don't fear him. But like, like gory amputee fashion. I'm like, that's fucked up, man. And the guy, he got really angry. We kink shamed him. And one of the guys says, "So you're, so you don't like being yelled at, but you like women getting their arms and legs cut off." <laughs> we don't kink shame here, unless you like emergence, in which case, get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh no, do you? Know, you're talking about uh, Doom Guy versus Smash. I really want to see that now. Oh, yeah. And I decide what his final Smash should be. His final smash is he gets the B the BFG. Mm -hmm. Oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Or it'd be like the BFG ten thousand from Doom Eternal. That yeah. Uh, it, like well, shoots down from the moon. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Do you know who I would also like in in Smash? I haven't mentioned before. I thought about it. I would really kill to have a ah uh, crap. I would kill to have a Mortal Kombat character in there because uh, they were on the NES and the SNES. Mm -hmm. I just want like you know fucking Scorpion shows up. You, it, it has like Luigi and Mario, and you see the spear go into Mario. And just, yeah, I have to know. Not again. Like Luigi got his ass kicked by the Grim Reaper. Yeah. I I so um my new thing. I got my grandmother to watch the first episode uh, episode of Castlevania. Her response is, "This is a really weird kid show." <laughs> the guy gets split in half, <laughs> and I said. What made you think it was good Because you said that the one guy uh, from the series is in Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually not... Uh, no, wait, uh, Alucard, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Because, like, uh, Trevor Belmont isn't isn't in uh, Smash. I it's mentioned just... that, like, like his granddad was in her or some oh. shit. I, I, yeah. I don't know the Belmont family tree that well. Because my favorite Castlevania game is the one where you play as emo Dracula and you can steal the demon's powers. Mm -hmm. I kind of want a new Castlevania, to be honest. Yeah. If you use a Switch, you can have, like, chain control for a whip. I mean, well, as long as Konami owns a license, they'll probably just let it sit on the shelf indefinitely. Okay, I want Snake to show up in Castlevania now. Mm. You know how Snake had the thing where he'd do the intercom, or, and he, or no, the codex, and he would talk? I hope it when there's time, he says, I, you know, he goes, I feel there's a kindred spirit here. <laughs> My favorite thing, though... Is um they put a lot of detail into the codex crap, mm. yeah. I saw recently uh, there's a video of this yeah, this guy I follow on YouTube, uh, Mother's Basement. Mm -hmm. He does like anime reviews, 
And he was talking about the state of uh, live action anime adaptations. Oh lord. Um, he says that like he thinks that like we're at a point where uh, like it's time for like good anime adaptations, live action. Um, it's sort of like what comic books happened. Yeah, like same. Yeah, exactly. Same with comic books. We're, that uh, we're at that uh, sort of pre Blade, pre X Men period where. Uh, you know, we might like we're, we might start seeing uh, better adaptations now. That's you know, Hollywood might start at like, Trying like again. yeah, hiring people who actually know how to adapt the source material. And the, like he mentions the uh, Battle Angel movie. Yeah. I really hope that Battle Angel is good. I am too, and it's not even because I, I I saw one bit of a trailer. It's like, <laughs> like I'm sort of easing up to uh, her design. I'm still, it's from Candy Valley for me, but I hope it does well because I want to see more anime movies. Yeah, I mean, people said the same thing about uh, Avatar, how uh, the aliens looked kind of uncanny. I mean, those they were aliens and less human, so that... They were also weird. And I, uh, yeah. It was a cool movie. I liked the monsters more than anything. Mm -hmm. They're saying, like, how, you know, if Battle Angel is a success critically and commercially, then we might start seeing good anime adaptations again. I have a question for you. You can't use any, or you have to use somewhat obscure series. What do you want an anime adaption of? Somewhat obscure. Oh, um, I would say Yu Yu Hakusho, but that's not really all that obscure. True. Um. God, that would actually be really good. Yeah. Uh. This is, that's a tough question because so much of the anime that I like is... Okay, you can pick an anime you like for a live-action adaptation. Uh, JoJo's. Well, actually, yeah. It would have to be directed by, like, like Ron Howard and Guillermo del Toro fuse. I was just just say Guillermo del Toro directing it. Like, uh, if he was going to direct part one. Yeah, because I know that Ron Howard likes doing the weird shit with his backgrounds, like oh. he did with Seuss movies. Oh, oh, yeah, like... Yeah. I was thinking that kind of weird shit for, like, the state... I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know that, like, the, the, the Michael Myers Cat in the Hat movie was so bad, that's why we don't have live-action Dr. Seuss movies again? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it was his wife who, like, said, you know, stop this shit. Yeah, I wanted to picture her running, screaming through the building. Because mm -hmm. I, I rewatched the, a little bit of a Cat in the Hat movie, and I used to be obsessed with the kid, and I'm like... Jesus fucking Christ, what is that thing? I remember I used to like it as a kid, too. It must be the bright colors that appeal to autism or whatever. It either that or the fact that I liked Mike Myers because he was in Shrek. Yeah, uh, yeah, he pulls out all of his voices for all the funny voices for that movie. Yeah, but I prefer the Grinch movie. It's kind of warmed up on me. Because oh. yeah. I, I just like Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but like, uh, Cat in the Hat is a good movie for like memes. Oh, God, like, it yeah, is. Like the fucking bat meme. They, they did a new version of it, really something similar, where it's uh, it's a little boy and it's Mario behind him from the live action bat thing. You should have done the Mario kid. Uh -huh. Dude, do you know what I would like to see? Oh, no. By the way, here's a fun fact for you that disturbed me. Dr. Seuss cheated on his wife, who was, or one of his wives, who was dying of cancer, uh -huh. while she was dying of cancer. Uh -huh. And someone put in the comments, uh, uh, New, or one what or crap one wife two wife dead wife new wife <laughs> Jesus <laughs> um, if you could make an anime adaptation or a, a Hollywood adaptation of an anime what would it be now you probably guess the answer but you're going to be extremely wrong because I don't want to see Ava on the live screen uh, yeah. I've suffered enough I'm sitting there in the, sh you know, it'd probably just be rebuild, you know, more eye patches. What I would like to see is Gigantor. And here, because it's Cold War, and I like the Cold War aesthetic. You have a giant robot, and you get to fight mobsters of a giant robot. If I can't use that for some reason, my fallback would be Full Metal Alchemist. I would probably probably get Peter Jackson because he knows how to cut a really good world for his visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. Man, I really like Full Metal Alchemist, um, the robot guys. Oh, yeah. you know, Barry the Chopper was a character I was obsessed with as a kid because he had a skull and cleavers and those are two of my favorite aesthetics. Mm. And then, like, he died. <laughs> I, 
I have this curse. If I really like a side character, they end up dying. And that's why I'm afraid to watch My Hero Academia because you know, oh god, no! I just never thought about My Hero Academia. Do you think that there's like a superhero police unit or like, or there was a unit that was just for people with quirks? Uh, I mean, that would just be the police. Oh, true, but like, they had a division of it. Like, you know, hey, uh, this person got burned to death. Oh, uh, well, we can check all the people who've shown fire abilities. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's. That would basically be what the police uh, force becomes, because yeah. like I think it's like uh, ninety percent of people in the in the world have quirks at this point. Oh, um, the other thing, I had an idea for a stupid thing I'd like to see. It's the Marvel universe, but all the villains disappear. Okay, and here's what you have: you have a guy jaywalk, and the X Men are gunning him down, but and the quit, uh, you know, and the uh, ver crap, what their deaths called, like all the Avengers and the superheroes are beating the shit out of a guy because they're bored. I would actually like to see uh, a crossover between uh, the My Hero Academia world and Marvel. I mean, as long as it was the art style was done by the same people who did uh, uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, because oh fuck, I don't want to see anime people in realistic. That uh, creeps me out. Or, uh, like My Hero Academia, but done in the style of Boat Loki. Oh Jesus, I hate you. Hey, uh, I have a new favorite Marvel universe. Uh, it's called like Nine Nine Five One. It's it was done by Warren Ellis. And so like. Is well, that is that ruins? Yeah. I, I don't know why I like ruins in a weird way. Yeah, it like like from what I read about it, it just like it just came across as like super really really bleak and just depressing. Yeah, I just like it because I, I just picture Warren Ellis doing to do Marvel, and they said, "Hey, you can do whatever you want." No, because I had a joke where I'm in um in one of the Marvel groups I'm in. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna draw Skunk Rock in nine nine five one." It's just him in a, in a gas tank screaming. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I think I like about My Hero Academia from what I've seen? Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, It doesn't look like one of those somber, edgy superhero universes. Because right. I'm sick of somber and edge. Mm -hmm. Like, the edge no longer cuts me. Mm -hmm. It has gone dull. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, like I said, it's not, like, it's not as good as, uh, like, the DC animated, uh, movies or the original, like, Justice League fun. series. Out of 10, I'd say I'd give it a 7 right. overall, um, which is good. It's not bad. Like, yeah. it's, we're not grading it on IGN, like, a 7. Like, yeah, IGN, like... Too much water. 7 out of 10. And it's like, uh, it's like, like, 7 is still, like, I, I remember the uh, uh, game, Game Pro, or not Game Pro, but like, uh, what, GameSpot. Yeah, like, GameSpots, they had, uh, they, they had terms for each uh, number grading, which, uh, yeah, seven is good, eight is great, uh, nine is superb, ten is perfect. Uh, but now it's like, you know, all everything that's that we that's remotely good is now a ten, or a, at least a nine. And uh, but like, yeah, below, and even six is considered fair. It's above average. And hey, I'm sorry. I, I I was thinking. Remember back when they had all those review channels, like they were being inflated and crap like that. Of uh, being what? When they're like, "Hey, I want you to rate this game good." Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, um, that, like that was I think from the uh, because what happens with uh, like game reviewers is that they get a review copy, so it's like an, a copy early, and uh, like if the pub like if the game um, reviewer gives that game a bad review, then that publisher no longer sends them review copies. Oh crap! That explains a lot actually. Oh, it's a random thought. Um, uh, not to work yet about Marvel thing. They showed the invisible, uh, invisible girl from My Hero Academia, and is the only character that can be fully clothed and still be incredibly sexual at the same time. And I commend the, the hentai artist who came up with that. I mean, like the more clothes you give her, the more sexual she becomes. I know, and it's genius. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, the, I think, the last uh, opening to uh, My Hero Academia, they ha they put her front and center, but like because she's invisible, you can see the rest of the cast behind her. But it's like she's just wearing the gloves, and she's like, yeah. And it's like, whoa, Jesus, full frontal. <laughs> do you think, like, that there's, like, a, you know, I want to do a story where there's, like, you know, the invisible person, there's the cop just waiting for a walking pair of gloves to come walking down the street. Mm -hmm. does, it count as, does it count as public indecency if you're invisible? Good question. Um, I would argue no, actually. 
Like there was this some fan art I saw of her where like they splash her with paint. Oh. And, like so like that that would count I think. Oh, that's lazy, man. Or no, like it, it like it looks cool because oh. it's like mid splash. And... Oh, I thought it was just gonna be like they painted her and it's just a little bit clear. Now there's like a Tumblr comic where they like put uh, foundation and like contact lenses on her to get ready for a date. So I'm like, eh. like and, and it looks like a Tumblr comic. No, what they should have done is like you know the guy's powers that uh, he creates no sound. I actually had an idea for a uh, supervillain like that who like just able to absorb all sounds. That means that like he wouldn't he could absorb shock waves and vibrations. Yeah. Black Panther's like, why isn't my suit working? Yeah, I, I saw this uh, I saw this whole chat room fall apart. Someone said Black Panther the cop of worst fear of bulletproof black man and I just posted a picture of Luke Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Cage is awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, um I liked him uh, in like his original incarnation, where oh, he's yeah. just like this mercenary guy, or like he's a hit, like yeah, he's a hero for hire was his original slogan. I know. I'm sorry. I have to... uh, oh, and like his catchphrase was, "Where's my money, honey?" I'm sorry. I have to bitch about something. So my Xbox controller, this is gonna sound stupid, you wouldn't plug into the Xbox. So you know they talk about how there's three states of the USB. There's the up, there's the down, there's the super state. So unless you look, it's in one of it's in the super state. Guess what? The fucking pins came out, so it wouldn't fit back in. Because it's third party, no warranty. The company doesn't have a warranty, and I was so fucking pissed. Because guess how I found this out? So I called Microsoft. I got to the Xbox, and I got the Xbox One. I got the console. Got the hardware. And this has been 45 minutes of me fighting because I go Xbox, and they go, "Did you mean Windows 10? Xbox." And I was and I was home alone. So I go, Xbox, motherfucker, you know. And I was foaming at the mouth. And then I finally got for the Xbox, and they have an you know um, they play really low quality Halo Five rips. And I'm sitting there, and I feel the froth coming down the side of my mouth as I'm shaking. And then you hear, Hey, 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 that's music from Halo Five. You wanna buy Halo Five? And I and you and they go, Hey, hey, hey. What's the Xbox 360's original uh, console? Is it the Xbox or is it the Y box? And he 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 asked trivia, but makes me like kill myself. And I'm sitting there, and every ten minutes it says, you know, estimated call time is five minutes. So two hours later, I'm sitting there, and and you can tell how I'm how I'm all hyped up, and you can tell what I was like back then. And and the other guy says, Hey, are you there? I think we may have put you on hold for a little bit longer than expected. <laughs> yeah, so the guy, um, and yeah, he told me, like, you know, your best bet, play PS4. <laughs> I applaud the guy for saying that! Yeah, I mean, yeah, Xbox, or, like, Microsoft in general just has, like, their their customer support just does not give a fuck. Oh, like... Like, even when I was, I think when I was your age, like, I had, uh, like, I called about my Xbox 360 once, and, like, the, well, the guy, I had a better experience because the guy was just a total bro. Like, Oh, this guy was a bro, but he was an awesome, you know. Yeah, and, like, he was like, uh, all right, so you live in uh, LaGrange? And I'm like, LaGrange. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, dude, I'm retarded. <laughs> okay, I, I went that guy instead. Yeah. yeah. Because they found out he had a sense of humor, they fired him. Oh. He now works homeless. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, they have this guy who, who, they give you advertisements while you're waiting. If my Xbox doesn't work, I don't want to hear about new Xbox games. And the best part is, um, they have you do a, a survey at the end, you know, right? You can't push buttons, you have to talk to the survey. So they got fuck you zero out of ten for every response. Yeah, oh my god, and yeah, the controller's foobar, and it's barely a year old and I treated it very well. The pins just fell out. Hmm. Is it the newest uh, Xbox controller? It was a third party company once, so oh, I don't know. Oh. That's why there wasn't a warranty and now I know I ain't buying third party shit. That's Microsoft's plan. Because I've had a, a, my, a Xbox One controller for my PC for like more than a year and it's held up perfectly. I would warn, uh, warn you if it's one of the older ones the right thumbstick, it's a really nasty drift. That's happened to my first one. Mm -hmm. It got so when I'm playing a game, uh, if it's first person, Doom guy's staring at the ceiling when you hear the demons coming. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I want to have happen in Doom Eternal? 
I want there to be a campaign where you have to play as like the demons and you have to like follow in the wake of Doom Guy. And there's like this emotional scene where the Caco demon lifts up his dead brother. <laughs> and you hear Carry On My Wayward Son play softly from the. <laughs> God. Yeah, I just want a high definition version of H Doom. <laughs> oh. Like, have you seen the fan art of uh, the uh, Caco demon girl? I played H Doom. <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, I'm not sure what this hand sign's called, but yeah. Mm. It's, uh, have, you, have you seen the fan art? I have, actually. Yeah. It's, there's actually stuff, like, there's actually that on the Know Your Meme. And, uh, like, yeah, Know Your Meme is basically a softcore porn site at this point. Like, hey, you know, uh, uh, so I download Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, you know how they have that, uh, that uh, c content scaling? Mm -hmm. I want to start doing that now, and I'm excited. I found no one's done it with Thanos yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Thanos snap into the, the content scaling so his eyes bulge out in his mouth. <laughs> oh, so I download Snapchat. And I wanna oh. tell you this. My sister has it. And she's lonely on it because none of her EMS friends who are all firefighters and former Marines wanna get it. So I turn it on there and I go, <laughs> Well, I look like a retard. And they go, Wait a minute. I didn't put a filter on yet. <laughs> Yeah, I was laughing and I took a snap and I looked at them for a lot longer than I should have. And my new favorite thing is that I'm thinking like really like edgy quotes like the reality of man is trying to overcome himself and crap like that. It's me of cat ears. You should watch Rick and Morty. Excuse me, as I watch Rick and Morty, Snapchat, self immolation. Guess I'm gonna have to protest the M.D. style. <laughs> I'm sorry for being very dark today. That's what happens when I'm sleep deprived. What's really funny though is um that I actually did get like five minutes of rest. I went to the bathroom, we you know, and I'm in there and I hear on the window, and I look and there's a little uh, he's a he's a cardinal. He's got a little bit of brown on him, and a little bit of red, so he's probably a teen going while I'm on the crapper. <laughs> that bird almost died. I apologize for the mental image. <laughs> Have you ever seen that movie where it's the guy, he cuts up all the dead people to make a human body out of them? Seven? No, like, it's a serial killer movie and each of them are based on a sin. Oh, uh, Seven. Oh, yeah. Was that good? Uh, I heard it was really good. I recently was reminded of it because I remember seeing, or I saw a picture of a headless fat guy. I go, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'd like to see if... But what my you know we were doing a new Spider-Man game, mm -hmm. and my friend asked me what one costume you want in there be, and I have a stupidest answer: Spider Boy from the Amalgam Universe. Mm -hmm. It's Spider Man and uh, and uh, Super Boy, or well, Scar Spider and Super Boy. Mm -hmm. What would you pick for any costume be? Oh, uh, for Spider Man. Yeah. Um, I would say. I would say Spider Girl. Um, but like you'd have to change the like voice Boy. lines, yeah. Have it be Mary Jane instead, yeah. or you could just pitch shift it up a little bit. Hey guys! No, do you know who I want? You know how the Amazing Spider-Man had a Stan Lee one. I want Stan Lee to return. Mm -hmm. And the final boss, he has to get to the top of the Everest State Building. Is Jack Kirby with Doc Ock tentacles? Uh -huh. Each one has a pencil. He goes, I want to work for DC again. Mm -hmm. God. Oh yeah, well, I would actually like to see in the game, this probably is more than just a costume, would be Man Spider. Oh! It's like you could make it like, uh, you ever played Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction? You get a fifth one? Yeah, like just make it, like change the gameplay up to do that. Oh man, actually, do you know what I would like to do, and this doesn't sound stupid, do you know how we have a Sinister Six in the game? Mm -hmm. Have a multiplayer mode. Mm. When have you Spider-Man, you ever have a Sinister Six? Yeah. And you have to survive. Mm -hmm. I was actually watching gameplay of Spider-Man 2 for the PS2. Oh, that's a good game. And, uh, yeah, like, I never got the chance to play it. I played the first one, but for some reason I skipped the second one. And I always kick myself whenever I remember Spider-Man 2 because I missed it. My favorite Spider-Man game is Ultimate uh, Crab, Ultimate Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And mainly because you can play as Venom. Mm -hmm. And Venom makes it worth it. Yeah. I mean, if they had that dynamic with uh, Spider-Man and Man Spider in the new Oh. Or if they ever, if they actually are going to have Man Spider. Do you know what I would really like as a never costume, by the way? An Uncle Ben costume. Oh, yeah. 
Or no, Aunt May. That would be neat. Oh. Both, they, like their combos as they switch between them, like she, like they jump, like smoke from Mortal Kombat uh, Deception. Mm-hmm. You know they switch, and like if you Uncle Ben's special power that he falls over dead, and Spider Man appears. <laughs> Have did you know that Stanley you literally made up a quote? Great power comes great responsibility on the, on the spot. Oh uh, man. Did you know that in the comics, Killer Croc is dating the Enchantress in DC? Is that recent? Yeah. Oh, well, obviously I'm not going to know that. Uh, apparently it's not that bad. I just really want to see, uh, like, you know, uh, you know uh, like, crocodile monstrosity meets wo- a girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have heard that uh, DC comics are better than Marvel comics now. Yeah. But, like, I really wish that... I don't know. I've like ever since uh, Steve Ditko died, I was like wondering about uh, how superhero comics, superheroes in general, they've just sort of been forced to follow this set template on you know what superheroes are and like what like what the structure should be. Like change you know, it up. Yeah, like 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 what Watchmen did. Like like a lot of people like that's kind of what caused the crash in the 90s was that people were just completely misinterpreting Watchmen as being like oh superheroes have to be edgy now rather than superheroes can be whatever. They don't have to be always good or like super villains. They can just be regular people in costumes. And I wish that we'd get m- more stuff like that. That's kind of what I like about Gwenpool. Mm-hmm. Because Gwenpool is just about as much as her trying to fit into a universe she's obsessed with as much as it is her being a badass. Mm-hmm. Badass in parentheses. Yeah, but then on the other end of the spectrum, you get something like Kate Leth's Hellcat, which is just one of the worst superhero comics I've ever read in my life. How bad? It's, um, it's basically like Vote Loki meets Brave Chef Brianna, where it's just this, like, disgusting woman who's just, like, terrible at everything she does. And then, like, she, yeah. <laughs> and, like, like, she, I don't know. It's like, she's never made fun of for being incompetent. She's always treated as being in the right. And, but, and it's okay because she's progressive. No, okay, if I did a comic with a character like that, I would have, like, not even a villain, just, a, like, a person in the media harp on them. Mm-hmm. Harp on them. You dropped your per, or you dropped your thing and Doc Ock got away. He killed six people because of you. Mm-hmm. Have a character like that. So like J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Uh, well, it makes me think of uh, how like back to Watchmen was uh, Rorschach was initially uh, Alan Moore's criticism of Steve Ditko, uh, Steve Ditko's character Mr. A, and how Rorschach was just like always he was like very like. His entire character is being uncompromising, even in the face of Armageddon, and just like holding his values like completely strict. And uh, like he was meant to be despicable, but he ended up being the most popular character in Watchmen. He's my favorite as well. Yeah, mine too. But and it's it's kind of interesting how like you can't force an audience. Yeah, you can, and that's an example of it. And that's kind of what's like, come like kind of what made me think of like superheroes as like being whatever as long as you have like a character who is like you know committed to their ideals that is what a hero is it's kind of in, in, to a degree that's the thing that I liked about older comics mm-hmm. is that so, there are comics when they didn't do superheroing all the time I mean you look at the golden age Batman he kills people uh, like super, golden age Superman even like uh, like I don't think he kills people, but he definitely puts, them. Yeah, he puts like supervillains in harm's way, like a lot. Do you know what I would like to see actually? Oh, by the way, random note: the Spider Verse should have had Spider Jameson. Mm. Oh yeah. Bring me photos of. Oh wait. <laughs> but yeah, like, if I did a superhero comic, I would have equal parts ramifications of their actions, and them trying to decide what to do with these consequences. Mm. Like, what if Generico Man throws a woman off a bridge during a fight out of pure reflex and can't save her? Mm-hmm. You know, or, you know, Mass Effect 3. Basically, Mass Effect 3 is dream sequences. Hmm. I don't know. I never played Mass Effect 3. Yeah, um, Shepard indirectly kills a little kid. Hmm. And the ghost haunts him, and it's revealed it's a Reaper controlling his mind through it. But still, it's, it's also post-max stress disorder. Mm-hmm. 
Rorschach. I was gonna say Mar Marvel is a good example of giving uh, creators too much uh, creative freedom. Yeah. Um. Do you know what I would literally do? I would kill half the cast. Of uh, what? Marvel. Oh. Just literally. Oh yeah, yeah. To tie into Infinity War. Actually, not even that. Just like have them be brutally murdered. Like you know, make it a villain that like, you know, for some reason he kills these certain people who've affected the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, like, I think that uh, with Marvel, it's like they forget how, like, in comics you're able to get away with a lot more than you do in the movies. Because I think about how, like, so the movie version of Civil War was completely different than the comic run. They couldn't do the comic if they didn't have all yeah. the characters. Well, the, not that, not just that, but the beginning of Civil War, what causes that is that, like, a school gets nuked or something. Yeah, oh yeah. So, like, and in the movie, it's just, like, oh, an apartment building full of adult workers gets blown up or whatever. And it's, like, it's a lot more shocking in the comic, and I think that it sort of serves as justification more in, to, uh, like, the actions that they take. And uh, it, it is a lot more, like, controversial. And, like, I, I think that's a good thing for comics. It gets people talking. Yeah. Do you know what I would maybe do for, like, if I had to start a Civil War event? Fuck, uh, I would... Hulk. Have Hulk go total balls out crazy. Have him kill dozens, hundreds of people. Have him go world breaker. And then you go, do we kill him? And then they go, no, he's a founding of... Well, no, he's not even the founding Avenger. Or it's like, you know, do we kill him? It's like, well, how? <laughs> and the oh, question. Yeah. And then, they, like, then they send him to Planet Hulk. Oh, yeah. Crap, no, or like, even better. Here's what you have happen. You have, like, Red Skull do his uh, hypnosis mojo mm. on Professor Xavier. Have him kill every single human in power using psychokinetic abilities. Mm. Once they're all dead, they blame the mutants or something like that. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, Marvel, like... Marvel shit the bed. I mean, both DC and Marvel has gotten so convoluted that I don't even think another reboot will fix it. I, I'm not sure. I would say... Do you know what I would actually do? This is going to sound stupid. Make a Universe 617. Or 717. Here's what you do. You take the founding characters of a Marvel Universe. You take the X-Men, Fantastic Four... Okay, maybe not X-Men, but you take the X-Men, Fantastic Four. You take the Avengers... You start over. Mm -hmm. If you need a character to fit a role, don't just take Cloak and Dagger. Don't just take Luke Cage. Take exactly who you need and make new characters and new stories based around the values of the originals. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of what uh, Ultimate Universe was. But do it good. Yeah. Okay, Ultimate was okay. Like, Ultimate Spider-Man was good. Yeah. Uh, everything else was kind of forgettable for me. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't think I'm a good judge right now yeah. for uh, the big two because just that I'm so burnt out on superheroes in general. That's kind of what bleeds into my enjoyment of uh, my, my hero academia because initially I was like, oh man, this is this is like superhero comics but done right. And then I get into it more and I'm like, uh, this is just shonen and stuff. I mean, I don't have a problem with shonen comics and but, shonen yeah. uh, anime, but it's just that we're it's we're oversaturated. Yeah, oversaturated. That's why. I think Godzilla King of Monsters is going to do good. Hmm. Do you see the trailer yet? Yeah. Um, I am excited. I'm sorry, but they had me sold when I saw King Ghidorah. It's like, Dios, 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 wait, no, Dios mío, Dios mío. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was meaning to get back into Pokemon. I think we talked about this last yeah. time was Pokemon. And, uh, yeah, like, I was meaning to get back into the anime, the games... I don't like the mangas as much as I do the games. I've been playing uh, Emerald in an emulator. Mm. Man, it, it, it takes you down memory road, doesn't it? Yeah. I remember playing uh, Pokemon Fire Red on the emu emu uh, emulator, and uh, it's really good. Like uh, it's The only cool thing things. I need to finish it is hear my sister screaming at her boyfriend in the background. <laughs> and that's when Jussie will hunt me down and slit my throat. Mm. No, I, yeah, for me, it was like uh, being in elementary school and uh, one of my friends coming up and being like, hey, do you know how to unlock Pika Blue? Oh, fuck I him. Fuck him. No, you know what I remember? You know what someone told me? Someone told me if you put a magnet to the cartridge. Oh, oh. Oh. That is evil. Oh, oh, oh. 
He's thankful that my sister caught me beforehand. Because I would have killed that fucker. You know why? I beat the Elite Four and I caught... I don't even remember who I caught, but I caught them all. Yeah, I get really... Man... Speaking about old games, I've been meaning to get, like, find a copy of uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And, uh, because I had, like, I had a copy of that, but it was stolen. And, uh, like, I still have my Wii. I, still, I, I just need to f get a new uh, Wii Mote, because that was also taken. Uh, but, yeah, I had, uh, all the, almost all the trophies unlocked. I had finished, uh, the boss rush mode on, uh, very hard mode. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I know how. I know how it feels to have yeah. all your progress stolen or whatever. Man, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do you know what I really, really, really wish was socially acceptable to watch again? Ben 10. <laughs> that show was okay. It had a really cool concept. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a show that could use a reboot. Okay, a good reboot. A good reboot. Good reboot. Did you ever see the uh, live action TV movies? Apparently. Yeah, it was directed by Alex Winter, who was uh, Bill from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. No. Yeah, you got Keanu Reeves going on to be in John Wick, and they got Alex Winter directing crappy Ben 10 movies. I mean, I, I didn't like them, but uh, I can see how somebody would like them. Well, I mean, I was a kid when I watched them. Yeah. Do you know what I would do for, like, if I had to do a Ben 10 plot? I would do, like, like here's what I would do if I did a reboot. He would meet, like, a uh, villain who also has the Omni Matrix or something similar, and they do the battle. They have all the same forms. The difference is this guy knows them better. But how do you be the guy nosy? So he goes to the home planet of all the species, and each episode's like, you know, oh look, there's the wild mutts, and you know, or like, hey look, there's that ghost guy who got turned into a fucking villain, and I always wanted his action figure, but I never had them. I remember in the in Alien Force, there were like uh, hybrid kids who like oh. who could uh, turn into one uh, or the other um, alien. Because you had, like, a kid who could turn into a hot streak, and, like, you had a kid who could turn into a speed wagon. What, that's, not, that's not the name, but, like, you know what I'm talking no, about. No, but, um, yeah, do you know what I would like to do? If I, I'm sorry, same as I'd like to do if I, if I ever had to do a Marvel comic. And, and I get a crossover. Spawn versus Doctor Strange. And you would have the ultimate battle of magic users. Um, well, I would li like, speaking of reboots uh, and cartoons, I would love to see a Danny Phantom reboot. Oh, yeah. I'd like to direct a Danny Phantom reboot, because I have an idea of, like, where that could go. You have an, a curse now. They yeah. tell you can do this. You sit down, surround you, the men arrive or in black robes. It says Cal Arts. Oh. <laughs> For, you know. You may, we may permit you to do a reboot as long as he looks like a potato. <laughs> they pull out like a bunch of like sabers and like create like a like video a cult thing. See now that image is in my head of Danny Phantom and done in the Cal Art style. Thanks so fucking lot for that. <laughs> Dude, you like okay, hold on. I have to go. You made me read Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, fair is fair. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> But, like, what would you do with that, like, here? Well, it would be, like, uh, sort of, like, the same premise, where, like, there's a portal to the ghost dimension that, uh, like, his parents build, and he gets, he tries to, like, uh, get in, get inside and, like, turn it on. He gets, like, zapped, and then, like, he's trying to find, like, a cure or something. Would you make it, like, it's almost lethal at point? Yeah, or, like, he all, like, he basically dies in my version that, like, he sort of, like, gets put in limbo and, like, another, like, a ghost spirit, like, sort of merges with him or, like, splits him and, like, into, like, two different forms. That would be cool if it was bad plasma and then he's a big reveal at the end of the series. Mm. Yeah, well, like, it would be, like, bad plasmas would be, still be there, but he... No, I think that the original idea was that half of his soul gets taken. Oh. And that Vlad Plasmus, like, more than half of his soul is gone, which oh, makes yeah. him more powerful. And, uh, like, it would be like he uh, like he tries to find, like, like it's, it's mostly the same, like him catching ghosts. And, like, I have this idea of another character who like, would be, like, uh, Sam. And, then, like, in this version, she's more of a goth character rather than, a, rather than a hipster vegan. Oh. Yeah. 
And it would be like uh, her mother or grandmother is like this uh, fortune teller, like sort of back out. Like one of those, you ever you ever go through like... Uh, You'd see like the sign that says fortune telling, yeah, like, palm reading in the... Um, yeah, like uh, like those uh, crappy... Uh, in the middle of fucking Lorraine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like those neighborhoods. Yeah, I used like, to live in that neighborhood, man. Yeah, but like this character, she would actually be able to see the future and stuff. It'd be interesting if like when he defeats a ghost, he has to go to her grave for where they died. Yeah, I can see that. Like that would be how he tracks them down. Yeah. Spy, like, he would have to, he would actually have to be a like detective almost. You know, oh man, and, you know, or like he like he would have to lay where they died and he gets the image. That may be a bit too much. Yeah, I mean like I it's, realize, this is never getting made because it's too good. What if it you know, somewhere down the line you're able I just had this joke image when you said Goth Sam deep somewhere in Sweden, Shadman's eyes shoot open. <laughs> I've seen him do like uh like oh, speaking of Ben Ten, he actually did some art of Ben Ten, oh, where it's like he like they it was like, well, you need some money here, put on this dress, and then she dresses up as She-Ra. Oh my god! Oh, I just had an idea, by the way, a dumb idea. I want to see like an anime done with like Dragon Ball Z fighting style of Shadman fighting trap. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been playing the Dragon Ball Z game uh, as the universe too, and I made a Namek, and my favorite thing is I found that her arm stretch. <laughs> so basically, I just bitch slap everyone. Yeah, I I wish that Hollywood could uh, do a good Dragon Ball adaptation. I have a question. Who's your favorite Dragon Ball villain, or at least major art character? Oh, uh, I want to say Frieza, just because I'm a normie. I kind of like his voice. When I was younger, I used to thought that he was either a woman or gay. <laughs> it's more likely the latter, but uh, yeah, I was in the same boat. Um, like, I, I was very confused watching it, because I'm, like, like trying to look for details. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my favorite's Piccolo. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good villain. Um, or Vegeta, he's also a really good villain. Do you, you know, imagine Boo, too. Boo. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, I wasn't really that into the Boo saga, because I think that's right around where I'd stopped watching Dragon Ball. Oh. Um, but yeah, he is a like, like sort of like in the sense that it's a throwback to the original Dragon Ball, where it's where like all the villains were goofy, but he's goofy in a really menacing way. Yeah, like it reminds me of an idea I had, and fuck you, guy may have been in the Ink Machine. Mm -hmm. I had the idea of a villain that was a tulpa inspired by a 1930s animator, mm -hmm. and the thing is, this creature had cartoon physics, so he'd pull his head off and he'd juggle it. When he pulls your head off, there's blood and viscera. <laughs> And his goal was to finish his artist sketches, basically by killing artists when they wouldn't draw it. Mm -hmm. It was dumb and edgy. Mm -hmm. I realized that I would like to do a reboot of a cartoon. I would like to do a reboot of the Spawn cartoon they had mm -hmm. on HBO. Mm -hmm. And here's how I'd make it good. I would actually use the villains. Like, Spawn has weird villains. Like, one of them is a cyborg gorilla with a serial killer's brain. Like, picture Gilla, Gorilla Grodd with a shotgun on his shoulder. They had a cyborg Russian guy named Overt Kill. Who you know about? Yeah. Is it Overt Kill or Overkill? Overt Kill. And, uh, crap. And probably my favorite of them all, Anti-Spawn. Which is like, I am you, but I use good magic. And the whole art with Spawn just kills him. And the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, probably Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yeah. Because, uh... Like we had mentioned uh, Baby Driver before, and Edgar Wright, who directed that, before directed uh, the Scott Pilgrim movie. And I actually really like the Scott Pilgrim movie better than the comic, I'd say. Just because it keeps... And I, I had uh, actually um, seen, or like, uh, Oni Plays, uh, one of the members of that, he mentions how he doesn't like Scott Pilgrim the comic. And he mentions that it's because of the tone. It keeps like a really inconsistent tone where... It's goofy in like one volume, and then later it'll be like really dark and serious, or like in the same volume even. Like, cause one like my least favorite my least favorite volume is volume five, where it sort of like goes back and forth between being goofy and being like melancholy and stuff. It's mostly melancholy, but it's like it's just so out of place. Yeah, it's out of place, and not only that, but uninteresting. It makes the character it actually makes the character worse. Um, but yeah, that's another thing that I would love to see get a reboot or like get another take in terms of like a 
TV or movie adaptation. I just really hope they don't use modern game inspirations in the reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if I see fucking Fortnite, or they use oh. the word, if if they say the evil boyfriends have a battle royale, I am shooting someone. I can see that being done for a sequel, or like, or just like a parody. Somebody just taking the piss out of Scott yeah. Pilgrim. Like that would like. I'm sorry. Oh crap! Sorry. Um, there are kids in the library who play Fortnite. I fucking hate them all because they jump up and down. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Like, do you know what? I remember watching the movie Scott Pilgrim. When did it come out? 2010. Cool. I was 11. Hmm. Ask me why I was always distracted in the apartment scenes. Why were you always distracted in the apartment scenes? The poster. You know the poster I'm talking about. Yeah. That's actually... I think we actually talked about this before. That's actually a plot point. I forget that because I was distracted. Well, it's a plot point in the comics. In volume four. Yeah. And because, like... uh, Or, like... Yeah, it gets, like... It gets brought attention to in the... Well, you got the yeah, same thing in the movie. But uh, by volume four, that's where, uh, like, Kim, like, rips it in half. And, like, but she does it sort of, like, uh, at Scott's expense when he's moving out. Or, like, no, he's... Yeah, he's moving out at that point. No, he moves out at the end of volume five. <laughs> she's, oh, like, man. It's all kind of blurring together, really. Yeah, like, you know... But yeah, that's like one of the problems I have with Scott Pilgrim is the tone. The main thing I have a problem with is the world building. Oh, it's so erratic. Yeah, it's... that's what you said before. Yeah, just uh, I think that yeah, I am repeating myself because I think that we talked about this in the previous episode. So I might just you gloss over that. Rage flow. I mean, I, I like yeah, I I will say that uh, it deserves a uh, good. Uh, second try doesn't everything deserve a good second try yeah i mean there are like i will i will argue that that some like some of the worst ideas ever made they can be executed best there's an actual book called ask alvin's boss which mm-hmm. <laughs> and make it that what you will i guess yeah i'm sorry like i yeah i'm sorry man mm-hmm. <sighs> but yeah i think that we're about out of time uh, yeah, I'm tired as fuck, man. Yeah, anything else you want to talk about, though? Uh, real quick, I just want to say this. I decided I'm going to be doing for next episode. I'll be watching Dragon Ball Z. Do you have a recommendation on what series? Ooh, that's a tough question because, I mean, if you're going to watch, Dra- like, if you're going to jump into Dragon Ball Z for the first time, I would recommend Dragon Ball Z Kai. All right. Just because it cuts out most of the filler. Sub or dub? Uh, dub. I, I mean, I say that purely as a nostalgia freak. But oh, yeah. um, I would recommend, in terms of like series, I would say start at the beginning with right. with Kai. Um, if you're going to, yeah, yeah, just start at the beginning and work your way through. All right. And my last one would say, did you know Goku's voice of a guy who voiced Ralph and Ed and Eddie? Hmm. Uh, was that in the American version? Because yeah. I th- I thought it was like in the Brazil cut. No, I'm pretty sure it's the American version. Oh. Huh. I will have to look into that. I'm not sure. I just heard that. And all I want to picture is, you shouldn't mess with the son of a sheep herder. Yeah, you see all those uh, images of Rolf holding up the spirit bomb. God. Do you, by the way, I, I all I know about Animal Z that I appreciate is that Goku's a little bit dumb. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's actually explained in the story because he, like, he hit his head on a rock in the, in the, like when he was landed on Earth as a baby. That could have ended a whole lot differently. Flat. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Can't believe Goku is fucking dead. And on that note, I've been Tony. I've been Zach. And this has been the Monkey Bar. <laughs>